to our homestead. There's a lot of construction, there's a big mess, but come on in and take a look. I'll give you a brief tour. We bought some low-lying rice field land where they were growing rice. So the first thing we did is we had to raise the site with lots of fill dirt. So if you look around, you'll see we had to raise it about this much with this uh, tan colored earth, over 200 trucks. And over here, we've used road base. We've raised up the driveway and the building site so that we're above the surrounding rice land so there's less flooding. Over here in the front, we're going to have a kitchen garden. We have to improve the soil. You know, it needs a lot of work. We added a fence in the front and around three sides to keep the cows out. Over here, you'll notice we started a, a house. We're using recycled wood. We tore down an old house, hired some workers, and most of the house will be recycled wood. There's not enough, unfortunately, so we're going to have to buy some new wood for the walls. Let's go take a closer look. Okay, you'll notice the house is raised off the ground. Oh, what, about 30 inches. So we made concrete footers and set concrete posts, precast concrete posts. You'll see the old timbers, they're about 100 years old. This is the, actually the third house. This wood, this wood will have been used three times so far. Of course, things are really rough right now. Oh. There's two rooms, be a porch in the front and a porch on this uh, east side. The front door will be here facing the street. Here they're digging the footers that will hold up the, the porch roof. So we have a gable for the main house and there'll be two, two shed roofs off to the side. That way it'll keep the house uh, shaded uh, throughout the day. Because the main problem here is overheating. So there'll be a porch all along here. You'll see the old timbers are using, these. believe it or not, these are uh, extremely hardwood. They go for $100 a piece if you have to buy them. But we had it all tore it down and cleaned it up. In the back of the house we have the kitchen and bathroom. This will be a low fired brick. This is the standard building method in the area. This is just clay, 100% clay, run through an extruder, dried in the sun, fired with uh, burnt rice hulls, and then mortar together with cement. So it's a good, strong, waterproof wall for bathrooms and kitchens. And because it's a standard, it's easy to find workers to do this. We have a temporary shed set up, shade structure, to work out of the sun. We've got some of our extra recycled wood in there. And across the driveway, you'll see we have lots of recycled wood just stacked here and there. It looks bad, but we had to put it someplace. And this, this eventually will, will all be our forest garden, this whole area here. We're hoping to plant maybe in two or three weeks. So we're going to have to move all this old wood, these old windows pretty soon. Okay, we'll keep going this way. There'll be a carport here, somewhere in the back. Right back here, we're going to build a small barn, which you can store tools, uh, have a workbench, maybe a little workshop, place to park a truck, maybe do some maintenance on your car or motorcycle. Okay, 
Okay, over here we have our uh, well. We just had our well put in. Doesn't look like much. You can't hardly see it. And we had some soil delivered for our pump house. Well, they, they dumped it in the wrong place. Despite good instructions. No one was here, so they just dumped it wherever. Now we have to move it by hand to get it out of the way. Now the interesting thing about the pump house, it's an earth bag pump house that will look like uh, a United Nations emergency shelter. So we'll photograph the shelter building process so people in other countries can, can utilize this building technique more, more readily. Along the back fence, we're going to have a shade structure for uh, like a plant nursery and also to raise earthworms. We want to create lots of worm castings to fertilize the soil. You can't really buy good topsoil here, so you pretty much have to make it using low-cost natural ingredients like straw, manure, rice hulls, coconut husks, things like this, and food scraps. We hope to get food scraps from a restaurant, feed through the worms with manure, and use that to help build up the soil. So again, we're standing on the, the food forest. It's a combination garden and food forest. And we'll probably have four meter wide beds, east and west, with a narrow pathway. We'll have about seven beds from here to the street. We'll probably run a run PVC piping around the edges. The well is actually very, very good, high pressure, high volume. Because we're so low, we're, we're practically at the water table here. Like I said, th these are all rice fields around us. One, two, three, four, all four sides are just rice fields. So in the rainy season, the water table is at the ground level. So we'll run piping around the edges because we have like six to seven months a year with no rain. So we need water, we need irrigation during the dry season. We hope to use lots of coconut husks in the pathways. Lots of fruit trees, lots of bananas. It's a little bit different than most uh, food forests you may have seen on the internet and in the books. We're going to do things our own way. Uh, for instance, we're going to, to intersperse every tree with lots of bananas. Because, lots of banana plants, because we want them to shade the fruit trees. We're combining uh, medicinal trees, other types of trees, like neem, which will help uh, repel insects. We can make a spray out of the neem leaves and keep the insects away. It's a big problem here. And then have some vegetables intermixed, but it won't be the, the normal seven-story food forest. We just have to improvise. Also, we'll probably build in stages, or plant in stages. Starting with some trees, and then maybe ground covers. So that's it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big beds this way. Piping around the edges. And food for um, kitchen garden in front of the house. I don't know if we'll get to that this year. The soil is so bad, this is just cheap filters, they call it. Just excavated over here, maybe a fourth of a mile right there. So the cost was low, but if, if you look carefully, it's just sandy clay. It's basically dead soil, no nutrients. But that's, that's what we can afford, that's what we have. To truck in good soil from a long ways away would have been prohibitive. So it's pretty nice, it's just going to take a lot of work. The main goal here is to do it affordably. So many places on the internet, they, they throw a quarter million dollars at a farm, at a homestead and, and say this is the way to do it. That's not affordable. Most people cannot afford that, but a lot of people can afford a small piece of land 
about one acre. This is about half an acre. They can afford low quality land, like bottom land in an area like this. It's undeveloped and working with simple materials, low cost materials like recycled wood, uh, you, can, you can develop a, a nice little homestead for you and your family. That's what we're going to document here in, in the coming year, all the different projects that we're doing here. So stay tuned and hope you come back. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.